Loki review. This is the 21, 2021 through 2023 streaming show on Disney Plus set within the MCU. So I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I'm currently dealing with some back pain, but I still have a lot to say about the stuff I watch, so I'm going to speak faster until my back feels better. This video is a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide to do so, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so, hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoiler, so you can mute and skip ahead when you see me lower my index finger. Please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in this franchise, the MCU. Yes, that includes stuff like WandaVision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know, this review will be based on the fact that you know what happens in the MCU leading up to the show. If you don't, you will be confused, both by this video and the show itself. I mean, technically, hypothetically, you could watch it as the first thing, the first MCU thing, but it's not going to hit the same, certainly. If you want my spoiler thoughts on episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. So, the plot. This is set immediately after his escape in Endgame. The Loki from the first, 20, the first Avengers movie, henceforth known as 2012 Loki, is arrested by the Time Variance Authority, or TVA for short. They're responsible for the proper flow of time. After going through their version of the DMV, he goes before a judge, Ravuna Renslayer. Judge Renslayer simply wants him reset. That's what usually happens. And there's nothing for 2012 Loki to go back to, so he starts forming a new identity since it simply makes no sense for him to, you know, stubbornly hold on to the identity he had before the show. He is never going to become king. But TVA agent Mobius thinks that 2012 Loki could be useful. And, you know, this is not the sort of thing that happens all the time. In stopping a threat that is killing TVA people and stealing their technology... And, let's see, yeah, uh, the show manages to uncover a part of Loki's character that we haven't seen before in the MCU and enable to, him to redeem himself in a way that we haven't seen in the M MCU before. You know, we have seen him do a lot to, to redeem himself, and this is not, like, undoing that or something. The show is not. And I think... I think that might be about... Yes, so the the core concept of the show, you know, basically think Time Cop with substantially less martial arts artists doing the splits and significantly more complex. That was that was a joke. It's it's significantly better. I, I don't dislike Time Cop, but this is so much better, so much more interesting and, and complex. And, yeah, on the show, essentially anything could happen. Time travel, alternate dimensions, and the show makes pretty good use of that. Like, there's stuff that has ended up on the cutting room floor. You know, they, they, they had different plans for how the show would, would play out before, at least certain things of the show, before Corona. And, yeah, it's... It's too bad, and you can definitely see. There are seams where... Yeah. And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and a lot of the time, the time travel rules that the show establishes fit what has been established earlier in the MCU, whilst adding new details. And... Yeah, one of the first things that happens on the show is 2012 Loki is shown what his end would be if he just stayed on the same path. And because of that, he changes his approach. Uh, you know, this was basically the same thing that happened to Thanos in Endgame. You know, he, he changed his approach. He did not change his end goal. And let's see. Yeah, and, you know. Agatha Harkness didn't see the end, but she saw the start of Wanda. I believe she knew the end because of the prophecies about the Scarlet Witch. I suppose it would be a stretch to claim that anything like this quite happened on Captain America the Winter Soldier, but other than that, it's, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is just how the villains are going to be handled for, you know... 
at least some of these MCU stories now. And uh, let's see. It, yeah, it's a pretty good practice run for Kang, who conquers throughout time. And yeah, before this show, my favorite Loki was the one of the first Thor movie. And yeah, this show actually manages to, to surpass that. Which is not easy. I've I've been, you know, carrying water for that Loki for uh, twelve years by this point, I guess. Uh, Thirteen? When did Thor one came out? Whatever. Um, but yeah, there's just there's so much depth and complexity here. You know, the the show really makes use of the fact that it has so much running time compared to a movie. And let's see. I've previously talked about my issues with Thor Ragnarok, so I'll keep it brief and relevant. I don't see much point in having Loki in an MCU story if he's never able to outsmart anyone, if we're only laughing at him, never with him. I will grant that his redemption was compelling, but they didn't have to turn his character into a complete joke. This show has gotten the balance exactly right. Like, 2012 Loki is redeeming himself, but he's also outsmarting others. Sometimes we laugh with him, not at him. And... Let's see. Yeah, the show is careful to explain some of the, you know, the moment that you have the, the time travel, it opens up a real can of worms of, like, potential paradoxes. And, yeah, the, the show writers realize this and put care and effort into explaining why it works out the way it does. And, uh, let's see, yeah, the... the of these first three Disney Plus MCU shows, it's probably the one that moves the fastest as far as plot goes. Let's see, pretty pretty quickly setting up key concepts, and we meet the the main characters very early. And yeah, 2012 Loki gets a tremendous amount of character development just in the first episode. Ultimately, I do wish that you know. I don't know if I want to give away exactly when, but at some point in the show, it does start kind of spinning its wheels, and it really feels to me like this is on account of them not being able to do exactly what they had planned to do because of the, the corona restrictions, which I am really glad that they followed. You know, that was absolutely the right thing to do. And let's see. That... More or less covers. Yeah, not every episode has a lot of plot or character development, but there's always one of the two. And let's see. Yeah, the, the main mysteries will only very gradually be uncovered over the course of the show. Some people will definitely be frustrated by how long it takes to unravel. I may well be one of them. And let's see. Yeah, and I, I think it would have been, it, it really wouldn't have been difficult for them to have a bunch of red herrings along the way, so it wasn't so easy to tell just how little is solved of the mystery in episodes. And I don't just mean when you look at individual episodes, but, you know, a, yeah, too much of the show, in, in my opinion. There wasn't really mystery enough for more than two episodes, three at the very most. And let's see if they weren't going to have red herrings and the show decided to focus on mystery. And let's see. I think that might be about what I have to say. That. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say the show is bingeable. Uh, you know, th there are two seasons, 12 episodes total. Yeah, you could knock it out in... Might be a little bit much to knock it out in a single day, but you could definitely knock out both seasons in a single weekend. And... The... Let's see... Right, so some, some, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, um, 
quote of some fellow critics here, the, the show has themes of free will versus determinism, and it explores it really well. It's probably thematically the strongest Disney Plus show, uh, Disney Plus MCU show so far. And let's see. Um... Yeah, the, the the show handles plot twists fairly well. It never like falls apart, and I would say there are roughly the right right amount of the yeah. So let's see. Yeah, the the pilot is a, a good episode, a good pilot. It is very much for sure a pilot. There's very very little that actually happens. It's a lot of rules being established about the TVA. We meet the characters working there. It tells us what the rest of the show is going to be. And let's see. I think that might be what I have to say. Oh, right, right. And um, let's see. Um, yeah, the, the redemption arc is set up very early. And... Yeah, it's it's um, it's a very compelling way to handle 2012 Loki, and let's see. Then we have the yeah, um, the the finales. You know the 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 season one finale is really really strong um, and yeah the the season two one as well and um, yeah as as far as I can tell there's not going to be more than these two seasons and that is definitely I think they chose a good I'm I'm glad that they didn't just like one one of the things that like old traditional television uh, you know well yeah television shows before streaming shows they were very guilty of doing this like basically uh, not all of them but a lot of them kind of just kept going for as long as they felt that they could and you know many of them kept going long after they should have stopped and yeah I, I really appreciate that this show very much did not do that I'm, I'm not 100% certain if they were always if it was always specifically going to be the the you know specifically two seasons but it feels like a very natural way it it you know season one didn't feel like they essentially only had enough for for one season but chose to like just not really have a lot happen it it did feel like they always were moving and I think that might be about, let's see, yeah, so, uh, right, so as an adaptation, I, I have not read the comics that feature the TVA, but from what I've, you know, I've watched a bunch of videos by people who did read them, and basically, you know, they, they take elements of the comics, but changes a lot to make it fit the MCU, like the MCU has been doing up to this point very wisely. And, yeah, the, the show is very much a, a tribute. Like, it definitely loves and is one itself. Quirky takes on high-concept sci-fi, takes some inspiration from the Terry Gilliam masterpieces Time Bandits and Brazil. And others say that the show bears resemblance to Doctor Who and Rick and Morty. I don't know. I haven't watched those shows. I'm not, like, opposed to it. I'm just, I, you know, I don't currently have a service that has either of them. And let's see. So the, yeah, 
um, the the characters. Mobius, played by Owen Wilson, you know, kindly reminding us that dude can act. You know, he's funny. He's really, really funny in this and other places, but he can actually also act, you know. And, yeah, Mobius has basically seen it all, so it takes a lot to really get under his skin. And Loki's used to people that he can manipulate, but that's going to be extremely difficult with Mobius because he's seen Loki's entire life. And, let's see, and it, Mobius has a positive result with Judge Renslayer. He has unconventional methods, but he gets results, damn it. And, let's see, the, um, yeah, and there's, there's a somewhat brotherly relationship between Loki and Mobius. Maybe it's more like Mobius is a father figure to Loki, giving him the acceptance and encouragement that he's never gotten, and that's why he turned out so bad. And that... Let's see. Yeah, the, the two of them have great chemistry. They're really fun together. And uh, Gugu Mbatha Raw portrays... Ah, uh, hold on. I should have copied in more recently because I copied in before we had a character name. She plays Ravona Renslayer, and she does a really great job. There's this, th like, essentially, she is, she's very, she's all about the job, and you, you learn a lot about her over the course of the show, and... Yeah, just a, a very compelling character. Wunmi Mosaku plays Hunter B-15, and she, yeah, she, when we first meet her, is just all business. Like, she does not take any chances with variants, which is what 2012 Loki is. Anyone who's done something they weren't supposed to do on the, on the sacred timeline. But over the course of the show, we see there's more to her. Eugene Cordero plays Casey. He's a receptionist for the TVA. And, yeah, he's, like, they have some some fun... He's He doesn't seem like he knows very much other than his job. And he's kind of, kind of anxious and nervous. Yeah, very, very fun character. And I don't think I want to give away, I want to talk about this character, but I don't want to give away, I'll just say, there is a character on this show that there's really, you, for a while, you don't completely know what exactly is like, where are the limitations of this character? And they keep playing with that in a very fun way. And just, yeah, really compelling character. Um, yeah. One of my favorites, of honestly, of the entire MCU. And a, a lot of people really love the, the character. Um, and I really don't want to give away exactly, because it was a major surprise you know, like, over the course of watching the show, you'll realize who I'm talking about, but I don't think you should know before watching. I, I want you to be as surprised as I was. And Sofia Di Martino plays Sylvie, who's very... Like, she's a... She's a, she's a character who carries with her a lot of pain, and they get some some really compelling stuff from her she's one of the she's a very complex character and i think that might be about right um hmm. yeah uh there are other actors there are other characters on the show honestly Almost every character, almost every major character, is is very compelling. Yeah, I, I gotta mention. So, Ki Ki Hui Kwan 
is phenomenal on on this. Uh, you know, I'm I'm so happy he's getting a career, career resurgence. He really deserves it. And yeah, he he's he's great here. He was great in uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm I'm so glad he's back. And that is it for the. Oh, hold on. Right, I did have a little bit more about characters. So, let's see. Yeah, the the um, yeah, Renslayer. You know, as a judge, she's making a lot of hard decisions. And, you know, hopefully unlike a lot of current judges, especially in America, hopefully the right ones, hopefully for the right reason, I won't give away exactly if that turns out to be the case, she, you know, she has a history with Mobius. It's only because he's the one suggesting working with 2012 Loki that she's going to allow it. And... Let's see... And yeah, this is. If the civilians who have no idea about the sacred timeline were completely unimportant, what would be the point in protecting the sacred timeline? So, every so often, there's the show features background characters and such who have no idea about all the time travel, and we can easily empathize with them stuck in a situation that we only very briefly see. They they do some great stuff with that. And yeah, every major character who gets at least some strong character development has to face something they didn't think they ever would, which is a great way to explore a character. And I think that might... Right, so the... Um... Yeah, the cinematography and editing are much more daring than a lot of MCU. You know, the, the MCU has a bit of a house style, and this dares to deviate from that and gets a lot of, of really great stuff out of it. There's some very memorable, like, yeah, shots and, and sequences and some some playful editing. The action is quite good, though. The, some very convincing fights and largely the special effects are great and yeah so uh, talking about the the set design and settings and such the TVA has futuristic technology gadgets that can manipulate time make it go faster slower freeze it rewind fast forward aesthetically it's retro an office from the 50s with analog technology it's full of bureaucracy uh, you know the the when they want to soften up a suspect, they'll put them in a memory loop. A memory where they're confronted with something bad they did. You know, compared to, like, in... You know, where in, in real life they might, you know, put a suspect in, in a room by themselves for a very long time, not telling them what is this about, that kind of thing. And... They have truncheons that can prune people kill someone by removing them from the timeline, making them disintegrate on a molecular level. And yeah, very, very cool effects for that. And let's see. The MCU can be somewhat sedated in its colors. A lot of the movies look too similar to each other. Saying that as someone who loves the MCU, in the show we get a neon-filled Blade Runner-esque city. And yes, we also get that in some, something like that in Falcon and Winter Soldier, but this one is much more futuristic. There's this purple surface of a, a planet. Just, yeah, it, it's much more vivid in, in the, the colors, uh, at least some of the time. Not, not all of the time. And uh, yeah, um, some of the action uses the fact that they can manipulate time. And, uh, yeah, a, a lot of, like, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and then they also use these TVA gadgets and some, yeah, some chases. And I think that might be a...
found. Yeah, some excellent sound design. You know, the various gadgets don't exist in the real world. The show does a great job of using audio to convince us that it is real. And it can, yeah, when the show goes for comedy, which is not, like, constant, it's very, very funny. They, they do some of the, you know, usual kind of, like... MCU type jokes, but there's also other kinds. Let's see, and the um, right, right, yeah. So, so as far as pacing goes, WandaVision took a while to reveal very much of the main mystery. Personally, I was very happy with all the red herrings. I understand not everyone was. At least it did have red herrings. Where Loki, you know, for a lot of it, yeah, not enough red herrings to, to really keep you guessing. Uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier had long chunks where very little would happen. It was just people talking. Important issues, good lines, good delivery, but I do think that it ended up taking up uh, too much time. And I hate to say that because I really do think like racism in America is an extremely important topic to, to probe and a lot of the time that show does a solid job of it. But some of these talking scenes just, yeah, they, they kind of kill the, the pacing. And, you know, yeah, at least every, at least once per episode of Captain America the Real Soldier, there'd be a scene of people talking, and it's, you know, it can be compelling, but there's not a lot visually going on, and the scenes go on for too long. Uh, but but yeah, uh, for a chunk of, of Loki, the, the show, it's very slow in its slow drip feed of information about the main mystery, frustrating slow to the point where it felt like absolutely nothing was happening there. You know, I, I used to say it was a good thing for these Disney Plus shows that unlike the 22 episode per season, 42 minute episodes that would air on TV, before the Disney Plus show, you know, back when TV was, you know, bef before streaming, the Disney Plus shows did not have to fight for our attention by having something dramatic at the end of every seven minutes when there would be an ad break since something you're watching that's being transmitted at that time for the first time on TV has rivals on other networks at that same time but Disney Plus shows you can watch anytime once the episodes on Disney Plus I can't help but feel like maybe it would have been good for these shows to you know, I'm not asking for ad breaks but if they could use that sort of What's the word? The um, that same philosophy, that same approach, even though it doesn't, yeah. And that brings us to yeah. the The best element of this show, I would say, well, yeah, it's, it's a tie. the The exploration of really, really high concept sci fi and like different philosophical approaches to, to complex issues and the the chemistry between Mobius and and Loki and let's see yeah the, the worst aspect is the the pacing I've already detailed why and yeah the thing I was probably most worried about was that it would just not have enough to really do with the and and not not enough material to fill the time some of the time that was the case and thing I was most looking forward to was more exploration of Loki and it absolutely delivered and yeah um, both season openers and season finales and overall seasons are great I I love every episode of this show and yeah, um, I, I rate this eight branching timelines out of ten. And yeah, so I have done some rankings of all the yeah, all all of the Disney Plus MCU shows and. These are ranked worst to best. Keeping in mind, I love all of them. They're all amazing. I'm ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love them all. 
and yeah, I would I would say yeah, um, the overall show or season, worst to best, Loki season one, what if season one, Secret Invasion, Hawkeye, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki season two, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision, and when it comes to finales for ones that have ended their run so uh, let's see yeah secret invasion hawkeye the falcon and the winter soldier loki season two moon knight ms marvel wandavision and the the pilots uh, let's see worst to best what if loki Hawkeye, Secret Invasion, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. And yeah, if you like this video, please comment, thumbs up, subscribe. There should be a link to my main channel page, one to more links to stuff like relevant plays on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, and currently they tend to come out very similar to this one, so if you want more like this, you're like... Right, one, usually, sometimes it's more than one. Review. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, but every week at least one that is a review, usually it'll be of a movie. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.